call this beat Will Smith because it slaps hard. So we have a question in the chat. And the question says, before I take a girl from my school out, I'm looking to meet up in the building and eat lunch with her. This way, there's a better chance of her saying yes, as I'm less of a stranger. And in parentheses, he says, I met her online. I didn't know you can meet her in line. How old are you? You can. I thought you had to be like 18 to meet to, to do online dating. I, I don't know. I'm 42. I don't know how that works right now. Anyway, so he says, I hate eating with people because it's a constant fight to keep things interesting and avoid awkwardness. How do you avoid silence slash awkwardness in situations where you're just talking? I know you said something about how guys project awkwardness and I just have to not feel awkward, but no offense, that's not been able to help much. Well, um, given your, your station in life, you're, you're young. So unfortunately, nervousness is part of the, the process to eventually get not nervous. Like um, there's, a, there's a great saying that I read that I'm going to use later in the show also, but you have to uh, become comfortable with uncomfortableness. Like the thing that most guys have a problem with on dates is trying to figure out what to say and what to do when there's awkward silences. And I've just found that sometimes it's fun for me now. Now it's fun for me to bask in awkward silences. Like I can't think of something to say, or I just finished saying something and now she's not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. And sometimes I'll just sit there just like, and I'll just let the moment sit. But I don't do it in a way where I'm projecting that I feel weird about this. Because I found if I still look confident while being silent, then they might feel awkward, but I don't. And they're going to go off of how I feel and what I'm projecting, you know? Uh, but more to the point, the other secret I found is this, is that guys, I, look, when I was like 14, 15, 16 years old, and I, and I, the few times that I got dates or whatever like that, I would be so worried the day before of trying to figure out, okay, what can I say to this person? What can I talk about? What's going to make me look interesting? What is that doing? It's putting all the onus on me. I'm basically saying to, to, to in my head, I have to impress her. And so it's all about me, me, me. I got to think of what to talk. I listen to that. And it didn't dawn on me until like my 20s, like my 20s, mind you, that women want to be heard and they want to be able to talk. And most guys aren't allowing them to do that because most guys do what you're doing doing what I used to do, which is I got to come and bring all this conversation. Nobody ever thinks about just asking follow-up questions to what she's saying. So my method is typically this. And I've been, if I'm in a conversation with a woman, if you are actually listening and not just staring at her boobs, not just staring at how hot she is, whatever like that, if you actually listen to the words she's saying, women will dole out things. And if you're listening, you can now, this is called active listening. You can now pick out a minimum of two or three things that she said that you can respond with, with a question to ask, to help her delve further into it, right? So for example, you're at school, you could say, okay, so like what activities do, do you do at school? Oh, like, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in the cheerleading squad and it's funny, I actually got to start cheerleading because I used to dance as a little girl and then my mom really like liked the way that I was dancing and thought that I'd, I'd be a good cheerleader. And so I got into it and I had all this competition to get into the, to the thing, but then I made it. Now you're thinking, oh, she ended the story. So great, we're done. Now I gotta think of something else to talk about. She just left a bevy of information for you. She left information like, oh, what dance group are you in as a kid? Well, what moves do you do in cheerleading that are actually really interesting? Or like, what teams have you guys played against? Or what cheer competitions have you been in? Like, there's a plethora of questions you can ask her that she's actually waiting for somebody to ask her. And the problem most people do have is in conversations, somebody will say something, and then rather than continuing that conversation, they just end the, end the story. So she's talking about, she's a cheerleader, she was in dance, and she has fun at cheerleading, and then you wanna move on, to, that's great. So what other things, that, no, keep the story open. You And what, what I do is this, if a woman starts talking about something, I will ask a minimum of three follow-up questions to what she's actually talking about, and then I'll interject an opinion of mine or a statement of mine. I'll, I'll uh, per convey something that's similar of what I'm doing to what she's doing. And then I'll talk a little bit about myself and then ask her another question. So 
Let's go to the same example, right? She's saying like, oh my God, you're cheerleading this and that. I'll say, great, so like, how long have you been cheerleading for? Oh, I've been cheerleading since I was a kid. I started doing dancing this and that. Oh, really, what, what dancing were you into? Because I, I love dancing myself. Like, what dancing thing were you into? Oh, I was part of this group and this group and this group. And then I, you know, got into cheerleading. And so it's been so much fun. It's like, oh, that's great. Like, what, what other schools have you cheered against? Like, I'm, I'm curious to know like what the cheerleading life is like. Oh, well, we cheered against this school and this school and this school. That's awesome. You know what? I also happen to play to play sports. I happen to be an instrument. I happen to do this, this, and that. And so I know all the competition thing is because, like, let me tell you, when I'm out there on the field or doing whatever, like, going against other people, it's so rough, isn't it? Like, my God, like, I've been doing, I've been doing basketball forever in a day, and just like, you know, I mean, but even in basketball, we see the cheerleaders out there. I just, I just never really knew all about them. So, like, aside from cheerleading, like, what else are you into? Boom. Then she goes off on another tangent, and then you ask another three questions that are follow up questions to that, and and all you're doing is listening. Like, if you transition yourself from I have to talk all the time to I should be letting her talk most of the time and I should be listening 80% of the time, you will find that the woman at large will take over the conversation. At which point, all you got to do is sit back and listen. And then while you're listening, listening for other clues that she's going to give you as to things you can ask about to talk about more. And then she'll just go off on a tangent, go off on a tangent. Go off on a tangent. I know some guys feel like, but what about, can I talk about myself? Or what about, like, is she going to ask me questions? Well, this is also where this comes in handy because as you're asking her questions, a woman that has good etiquette, but more importantly, has high interest in you, will also start asking you questions. And so that's really how you know that you got a good girl in your hands. That she's, she'll, 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 like, you'll ask about, you'll ask her about cheerleading. So tell me about your cheerleading. Oh man, I do cheerleading. I used to do dancing and now blah, 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 blah. But what about you? What do you like to do? Like, because women that are highly interested are also highly invested in your story. And so this should ultimately be a back and forth where you're attempting to do 80% of the listening, but you're also hoping that she's going to ask you stuff to see if she really has high interest. All right. But in terms of your end of things, really focus more on listening, focus more on asking them questions, and then when they answer the question, asking follow-up questions, add your own interjection in there about something that involves you and that's connected to her. And then also you can add in some jokes here, whatever, but like really focus on listening. You'll find the more that you're focusing on listening, you not you won't be as nervous. I used to be the guy that would write like, I remember one time I was dating this girl and I literally wrote like five um, things to talk about on a piece of paper that I had in my pocket. So when I was walking with her, I could look at the paper and then ask her like another question about something that I came up with. But what was I doing in the process? I wasn't actually listening to her. I was just focused on the next thing I got to say. And that kept me like not figuring out what to talk about. So it's the irony of like, if you have nothing to talk about, ask her a question and then just go off that. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into how to build up your conversations better. And it's a hard road. It's a hard thing to do, but you got to practice it because right now you're, you're meeting women and they're hot and you're nervous and you got hormones running everywhere. And you're thinking, Oh my God, like I just want to be able to have a conversation without sweating all over the place. Admittedly, I'm a little bit older. So women at this point don't phase me like that. But back when they did, I remember the struggles that I had of like, I got to do whatever. And it's like, stop focusing on yourself, focus on them, focus on what they're saying ask them follow-up questions, and it'll make it a lot easier for your conversation. And this is across the board. In fact, don't just practice this on women you're dating. Practice this on your mom. Practice this on your female family members. Like, practice this on other female friends. Like, really just get into more of listening more and talking less. Because I'll tell you, I, even though I'm 42, like, there are older, older guys than me that are like, like, you, I go to their house and it's just like, they barely say two words. They run the house, but they barely say words. Because they older men just know, like, oh, like, less is more. Like, the less I say, the more powerful it is when I do say stuff. And the less I say, the more I can listen to her and what her needs are and what she's wanting. And I can act on those things versus being in my head about, but I got to talk next. So just some insights from an older guy to you. So hopefully this helps you out. You're a bad boy, but you can't stop. Won't stop. Let's you are stop. high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high class man. You are high class man. You are high earning.